everyone, and welcome to today's Core Stability Workout. Super excited to have you all here. Super excited to be back. I'm going to start some tunes here. If it drowns me out, let me know, and I can, I can turn it down. So let's go ahead and start on the ground. Our backs on the ground for hundreds. I'm just going to have my water nearby me. So backs on the ground, feet flat on the floor. Now, curl your chin to your chest to lift those shoulder blades up off the ground. Arms come up to hover off the ground on the outsides of your hips. And pump those arms up and down just a few inches, keeping those arms nice and straight like you're slapping water. As you go through this, option to lift those feet off the ground, shins parallel with the ceiling. That creates a little bit more instability through the lower abs. Option to extend your legs straight out to a diagonal away from you, also creating some more instability. So feet planted, feet up, or legs extended, whatever you choose. Pumping those arms, breathing in for five pumps and out for five pumps. Nice deep breath, shoulder blades nice and high. Creating that instability, just warming up and waking up those abs. And when you're ready, tuck those knees back into your chest, rest your head. We're gonna do either crunches or sit-ups or roll-ups. So do whatever one you choose. If you're doing crunches, hands behind head, elbows wide, shoulder blades lift off the ground, release back down. If you're doing sit-ups, you can also have hands behind elbows wide or across your chest, going all the way up. The shoulders come up over your hips before you return down. And if you're doing roll-ups, same as sit up, just extend your legs straight on the ground. Long in front of you, and my hands reach up towards the ceiling in my down position, and they reach towards my toes in my up position as I do my roll ups. All right, go ahead and rest your head down on the ground, feet flat on the floor, knees point to the ceiling for single leg circles. Hands push down into the ground. Bring your right knee towards your chest and then extend your right leg up towards the sky, toe points to the sky. You have the option here to extend your left leg long on the ground if you choose, or you can leave it planted on the ground. That's totally up to you. Let's start our circles counterclockwise. So draw a counterclockwise circle, left, down, right, up working in your range of motion. So you choose how big your circle is, how fast you go, or what angle. So further away from you towards the diagonal is a little bit more work on those lower abs, really gluing that lower back to the ground. Let's switch directions clockwise this time. Trying to keep your whole body as stable as possible, as still as possible. The only thing moving is your leg to make it more challenging and give you less stability, you make the circle bigger. If you're wobbly, you'll make it a little bit smaller. Go ahead and rest your right leg. Let's repeat on the left side. So left knee bends into your chest, left leg points up to the sky. We go across the body, so we actually start clockwise with this one. Draw those circles. Nice job. Choosing your range of motion. I'm already feeling the stretch in the back of my leg when I do this. Um, but the, the focus here is loosening up the hip joint while engaging the lower abs. Each time we move in our circle, the lower abs have more instability to keep our back glued to the ground. Switch directions counterclockwise. Nice deep breaths. And go ahead, bend your left knee into your chest. Rest it on down, we go into our single leg stretch. So, our head was just resting, no longer. So, right knee comes into your chest, hug your right leg to your chest, and curl up chin to chest so shoulder blades come off the ground. Option to leave your left leg here, or you can extend it straight to hover off the ground. Switch legs. Hug left knee into your chest, right leg either goes long or gets planted, and continue to switch. Hug one, hug the other. Keeping the shoulder blades off the ground and, uh, engages the upper abs. And the movement of the legs going back and forth engages the lower abs. 
as you hug your knee to your chest, you're stretching the back of your leg, your hamstring, and as you extend your leg long, you're stretching the top of it, your thigh. So a lot going on with our bodies here. Go ahead and rest in three, two, one. Hug those knees into your chest. Rest your head. We go into our double leg stretch next. So when you're ready, curl up, chin to chest, shoulder blades come back off the ground and you're gonna hug your knees to your chest. Arms, hug both knees in. Now, extend your legs away from your body, circle your arms back so that your, your fingertips reach behind you and then hug everything back in. So extend everything away, hug everything back in. As you extend away, trying to get arms and legs as straight as possible, trying to keep those shoulder blades off the ground, super challenging here as we continue to warm up our abs. So work in a range of motion that works for you. If your legs and arms don't go straight on the extend, totally fine. We're working up to it here. Go ahead and hug your knees to your chest, rest your head, amazing job. We go into single straight leg stretch next. So this is just a more intensified stretch from the single leg stretch. So go ahead and plant both feet on the ground, flat on the ground, and hug or bring your right knee in towards your chest. Extend your right leg long to the ceiling as straight as you can. There's a little bit of a bend, totally fine. That just means your hamstrings are a little tight as are mine. Take your hands and reach up as high on your leg as you can. So whether that's your thigh or your calf or your ankle, just try to avoid pulling on the knee area. Now, you have the option to leave your left leg planted or you can extend it long to hover over the ground. Then you'll switch legs. Left leg goes up, right leg goes down, reaching as high on your leg as you can. So do a nice little gentle pull. With that gentle pull, you're just stretching out the back of your leg. So it's an active stretch, it's a dynamic stretch with that bonus core work, trying to keep those shoulder blades off the ground. You got this. You might, it might feel better as we continue to go on, as those abs continue to burn. Taking breaks when you need, resting your head and then rejoining us. Three, two, one, hug your legs in, rest your head. We get a break for our upper abs here with our double straight leg stretch. Hands go by your side, palms push into the ground on the outsides of your hips. And then extend both legs to the ceiling, glue your legs together, and legs are as straight as you can get them. Head stays rested for this one. So we're gonna lower our legs for three counts to a diagonal away from us. So reach those toes away from you and then you'll lift your legs back up to the ceiling for one. So lower, two, three, lift, lower, two, three, lift. So your range of motion depends on how glued your back is to the ground. If your back starts to peel off, decrease your range of motion. If your back is glued like cement to the ground, you increase the range of motion. So it doesn't matter what your range of motion is because you're getting the same work no matter if you're going long or short, just what your body, what, what will strengthen your body the best today. Go ahead, bring your knees in towards your chest, rest your feet down. My legs there um, started shaking, which means they're um, in that strength building fatigue stage. So that's nice. Um, okay, so if your legs or your abs are ever shaking, you're doing it right. Okay, feet. Flat on the floor, we're going into our bicycle or our crisscross crunches to finish out our warm up. Then we'll go into our balance flow. So, crisscross crunches, hands behind head, elbows wide. Opposite knee comes to opposite elbow. So, you're twisting your upper body across. One knee bends, and then the other knee bends. Opposite elbow to opposite knee, working those obliques, those side abs. Option to plant your resting leg, plant that foot on the ground or extend it to hover over the ground. Whatever works best for you. Trying to keep those shoulder blades lifted even as you cross through. To me, I think that's a myth. Feels impossible, but I know some people can do it. So if that's you, way to go. Three, two, one. Bring your knees in, rest your head. 
give yourself a little pat on the back. We made it through that warm up. So abs are on fire. I'm just gonna get a quick drink of water and we'll move on to our standing flow. Woo, Ooh. okay. Ah. All right, so for our standing flow, um, it is standing, but this first one you can do on the ground if that's your choice today. So first move is we're gonna focus on right side first. So it's a wall push up. So again, if you wanna do this on the ground, you can. If not, hands come out to shoulder height against a wall. Hands are on the wall. Step your feet back so you're at a little bit of a diagonal. We'll do some wall push-ups here. So bend those elbows and extend your arms to bring your body closer to the wall, away from the wall. Feet stay planted in the same position. Only thing moving here is our arms. As we do this, I'm focusing on my biceps. So I, when I bend my elbows, they go to a lower diagonal, like a 45 degree angle. If you wanna focus more on the triceps, your elbows hug closer to your rib cage. So your choice. Now, now we're gonna add our lateral high knee, if you choose. So you can bend your arms and extend, then do a lateral high knee. So right knee comes out towards three o'clock and then back down to do another push up. So separate them, bend, then high knee, or you can do the high knee as you bend. Again, only on the right side here we're focusing on. So that is up to you. Lateral high knee and push ups, either isolated or together. Uh, again, option to do this on the ground if you're feeling like you got muscles of steel today. <laughs> So Tara, when I come up from doing the push-up, my knee goes up, correct? Yep, or you can do it, or you can bend with the push-up as you do the high knee. Um, you could do them together or separate. Okay, thank you. Up to you. All right, go ahead, shake that out. We are gonna come away from the wall, or if you wanna use the wall, have the wall to your side for balance for this next one, you can. We're gonna do a lunge with a hinge and extend. So left foot forward, right foot back, and you're gonna do your typical lunge. So both, both feet point forward, left foot is in front, right foot is in back. You wanna bend both your knees so that they're at 90 degree angles. Left thigh is parallel with the ceiling as well as the right shin is parallel with the ground. Your right heel is nice and high. Shoulders stacked over hips. I'm gonna put my hands on my hips because that helps me for balance, do whatever works for you. Now, and, and I'm trying to keep my left side of my body completely still. I'm gonna straighten my right leg and it's gonna hinge my chest forward a little bit so my shoulders go ahead of my hips. Then when I bend that right knee again, my hips or my shoulders come over my hips. So we're extending our right leg, then bending it. So extending the back leg, then bending it back to our lunge. This is a lot for the glutes and the quads in your right side. So keep at it. Hold on to something for balance if you need. And come back to standing. Shake it out, do whatever you need to do. I'm just gonna kick my legs out to the side a little bit, shake them out. We're gonna go into our standing high knee taps. So first option, right high knee, down. Right high knee, down. Second option is to do a right high knee and hold for a second or two and then bring it back down. This is balancing here. Third option, right high knee comes up, then you tap your right toes back behind you a little bit and then bring it back up. So you can go straight up and down. You can add a hold to challenge yourself or you can tap your toe back a little bit before you come back up to that high knee. Choose your best option for today. While you're doing this, bonus challenge, take a soft bend in your left knee. That makes your left muscle actively your left leg muscles actively work to balance you 
rather than relying on the stability of your knee joint. Makes it a little bit more challenging. Shoulders stay stacked over hips, belly button stays pulled in the spine. All right, here we go. We're gonna take it up a notch if you choose. We're gonna do that high knee. Now it gets tricky here with our balance. We're gonna take those right toes and tap them to a back left diagonal. So you're kind of crossing the body. So right high knee, right toes, tap across behind to the left, the left diagonal behind you. <laughs> this is a tricky one. So <laughs> very messes up your equilibrium quite a bit. Feel free to hold on to something time, right? What was that? We're only doing one leg at a time, right? Yep. We've been working this right side real hard. Okay. <laughs> yes. You can hold on to something, right? Yes, you can. Oh yeah. I got the trick when you're holding on to something too is you can use your full hand, but as you gain confidence and as you gain stability, you can release to like a couple fingers, maybe one finger, hovering mm -hmm. off whatever you're holding. All right. And go ahead, rest those feet down. We're going to take a little bit of a stretch. So take your feet wider than shoulder width apart, wide legged forward fold. So feet are wide, toes point forward, reach to the ground as far as you can. For an extra um, body weight stretch, you can take your elbows, take your hands and reach to your opposite elbows. And that can kind of help reach your, stretch your spine down towards the ground. Then, if you choose, take your right hand, reach towards your left ankle, and this gives you a little bit of a twist, a little bit bonus stretch in those, the right side there. And then you can also reach your left hand up to the ceiling. If you can straighten your legs, that provides a deeper stretch. For less intensity, bend those knees a bit. And unwind, slowly roll back up to standing. <clears throat> on the left side this time, shake it out. Okay, now you know what to expect. So we're gonna start with those wall push-ups. Again, option to do it on the ground if you choose. I'm doing it against a wall. So go ahead, start with those push-ups, hands in front of shoulders, bend those elbows so that your upper body, your entire body, I guess, hinges towards the wall and then pushes away. Elbows to a downward diagonal is more bicep focused. Elbows down, pointing down, hugging in towards the rib cage, more triceps. So choose what you want. All right, let's add that lateral high knee, left side this time. So you can bend, press, left knee comes up to nine o'clock and bring it back down, or you can bend while you do that lateral high knee and then come back to center. Your choice. I think on the ground, these would be called like Spider-Man push-ups. So adding more instability, creating a bigger challenge for your upper body, as well as your core to keep you nice and straight as you're relying more on one side of your body with that leg lifted. Good job, a couple more here. My arms are tired. Oh my Three, God. two, one. Go ahead and rest, shake it out. We move on to our lunge with a hinge. So more balance here. Right foot goes forward this time, left foot goes back. Bend into your lunge. Knees bent to 90 degrees. Right thigh parallel with the ceiling. Left shin parallel with the floor. Hands wherever helps you balance. Mine are on my hips. Now, trying to keep your right leg still, straighten your left leg, which will send your shoulders ahead of your hips, and then bend that left leg again, shoulders over hips. Extend, shoulders go forward, bend, shoulders over hips. Just shifting, getting, becoming one with our center of gravity. 
for women, our center of gravity is more so in our hips. For men, it's a little bit higher. So it's actually more challenging for men to gain balance doing this kinds of, these kinds of exercises because they're working from a higher point. All right, three, two, one, feet together. We're doing those high knees. So left knee can do a high knee and then step back down. Or you can do a high knee hold for a few seconds, then step back down or high knee, tap your left toes back behind you, high knee, tap them behind you. Choose your option. These are all very difficult balance challenges. So choose what rewards you best today, what challenges you best today. Keep those shoulders stacked over those hips by pulling your belly button into your spine. <sighs> nice deep breaths. Ooh, beautiful job. These are not easy <laughs> by any means. All right, option two, do the backwards diagonal toe tap. So left high knee, left knee tap behind me to the right, then bring it back up. Woo, I am wobbling all over the place. <laughs> yep, that's it. <laughs> so if you are, you're not alone. <laughs> Remember that if you have a tiny, tiny bend in your right knee, just so that your knee isn't locked straight, you're using your um, muscles to help stabilize and balance rather than the stability of your joint. Neither are wrong. But if you want to engage your resting leg, your stabilizing leg, that little bend is how to do it. Ooh, okay. I feel it more on the ankle, I'll tell you the truth. Wow. Three, two, one. Yeah, my foot was starting to tense up a little bit there too. Okay. Wide-legged forward fold. Here we go. Feet wider than shoulder width apart. Reach down to the ground. Nice stretch through the backs of your legs here your glutes and your spine. Option here, you can take your hands and wrap them or grab your opposite elbows to help add extra body weights resistance to kind of pull your upper body down towards the ground, elongate that spine stretch. What some people like to do too is grab the backs of their legs, maybe their calves or their thighs and just gently pull their upper body closer to their legs to increase the stretch through the spine and the legs, the backs of the legs. From here, if you choose, left hand reaches towards the right ankle, right hand reaches towards the ceiling to add a spine twist. Again, the knees slightly bent, decreases the intensity, legs straight, increases the intensity of the stretch. Do what feels best on your body. And unwind. Nice job, everybody. That is the end of our standing balance flow. I'm going to get a sip of water and we will move into our floor flow. So meet me back on the ground. Whew. Just got a quick drink of water. We're going to start with our corkscrew. So our back is going to be flat. So upper abs are getting a break here. Lower abs. Whenever our head is rested, we're doing lower abs. So hands push down into the ground on the outside of your hips. Knees come into your chest and then legs point straight up towards the ceiling. Legs are as straight as you can. Corkscrew, you're gonna do a circle, draw a circle with your legs, bring it back to the top and then reverse directions. So this is building off of the single leg circles that we did in our warm up. Now with both legs, the intensity increases as our abs are nice and warm now. Trying to keep your hips stable, your lower back glued to the ground. You can lower your circle by increasing the diagonal that your legs lower on. You can do them more towards the ceiling. Make them big, small, whatever works best for you to engage those lower abs, the abs right below the belly button. You may also feel this in your hip flexors as those are attached to our abs as well. Totally fine, totally normal. Go ahead, bend your knees to your chest, rest your feet. Ooh, take a deep breath. Nice job. <laughs> We're gonna come up to seated for saw. So this is a stretch here. So it's um it's like a seated windmill toe touch. So 
be about a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. Mine are the width of my yoga mat, but if you have longer or shorter legs, that can change. Arms into a T shape, shoulders stacked over your hips. Opposite hand reaches towards opposite pinky toe. So I'm gonna twist my torso to the right. Left hand reaches towards right toes. And then I'm gonna sit back up straight, untwist and repeat on the other side. Now take this at your own pace reaching, twisting, and untwisting. We're wringing out our spine and our core here, our abs. So as one side twists, the other is actually contracting. Doing a nice inhale as you reset in the center and a nice exhale to help you get deeper into this stretch. Nice job, everybody and release. We're gonna go into some back extension next. So that is gonna be on the front sides of our body. So belly down, we're gonna go into our swan variation. So my upper body, or I guess the front side of my body is on the ground. And I'm gonna extend my arms straight out in front of me this time. Nose is pointed towards the ground. My head is just a little bit lifted so that you can hear me on the microphone. And my feet are about shoulder width apart. Toes are pointed. Let's start with pushing our hips towards the ground while pulling our belly button off the ground. You might feel a little contraction in your back muscles. Those are the muscles we're trying to engage to make this successful. Let's start with our upper body. So go ahead, engage those ab muscles, lift your chest just slightly off the ground, maybe a centimeter, maybe an inch. And then we're going to sweep our arms back to our sides so your palms could touch your hips and then sweep them forward, reach forward. So rounding out to the sides, reaching for your hips, rounding out, reaching forward. If you need to rest at all during this, please do. Back extension exercises. Okay, reach your arms forward and rest them down. We're going to do our lower body. So now upper body stays rested, lower body, your legs lift off the ground, squeezing your glutes, and then lower back down. Again, only a few inches here, lifting and lowering. If it's more comfortable for you to rest your head on the backs of your hands while you do the lower body piece, you can. Back strengthening. Now, option to alternate, do arms and then legs, or option to do them at the same time. So arms sweep back as legs lift, arms sweep forward as legs lower, or arms sweep and then legs lift. Do what works for you. Nice back strengthening and engagement here. Also feeling it in the glutes. Three, two, one. Rest. Nice job. Whew, that's not easy. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and lay on our backs now. And we're going to get into some more lower abs. So my back is on the ground. Head is rested. And arms are long by my sides. Palms push into the ground on the outside of my hips. Able top toe taps, as I call them. So... My feet lift off the ground, chins parallel with the ceiling, and then lower back down. So we can start with one foot at a time, or if you want to go double time, both feet at the same time, you can. So toes on the ground, toes lift, so knees go over hips, toes tap down, up to you if you want to do one or both at a time. How does this work? My head's on the ground, yep. and I'm, my, 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 my knees are bent, Yep. So am I, just, am I just picking up my knees and putting them down? Yeah, you're picking up your toes so that your shins are parallel with the ceiling, keeping your knees bent. And then you tap your toes back down. Oh, okay, so it's a real small movement. Yeah, yep. Oh, I got gotcha. you, thank you. Of course. And this is working on those lower abs. So anytime we're working on the lower abs, our, we want our lower back to stay glued to the ground. So you'll feel that pull off the ground as your toes come back down to the ground. So if they're pulling and your back's 
pose off the ground too much, what you can do is just um, decrease your range of motion. Don't tap your toes all the way back down to the ground. All right, now option to stay here or um, add a little spice to it. So your toes, when your toes lift, you can extend your legs straight to the ceiling, bend them again, toes tap. So toes lift, legs extend straight to the ceiling, bend, tap. Lower abs right under your belly button on fire. Really actively push. If you have a really strong lower core, it's gonna take more energy to push your lower back into the ground while you do this. So you choose how much energy and force you're pushing down to increase the intensity. Use your own muscles to create that resistance for you. In three, two, one, go ahead and rest. Okay, um, your head stays rested. We're gonna do our inner thigh and hip circles. So extend your legs to the ceiling as straight as you can if they're a little bit bent. Again, that's just the hamstrings tightening up. So let our legs come out to the sides so they spread apart into a V shape. Toes still point to the ceiling. And then close them, legs together. So out to the side, V shape, in together. When you're doing this, if you wanna add some more hip mobility to this inner thigh stretch, and it also is a hip stretch as well, you can move your legs in a circle. So legs go wide, you can round them either in front or like a top of a circle or the bottom of a circle to bring them back together before you separate them again. So legs separate, you can move them in a U shape to bring them together before you separate again, or you can do them in an M shape, like a heart. <laughs> before you bring them back together. So hip mobility, inner thigh stretch. I'm also still feeling the shaking here, so I'm definitely waking up my, my muscles that haven't been activated. <laughs> Toes and pointed, Tad. Toes pointed. Toes are pointed, yep. You got it. Okay. <sighs> All right, go ahead, bend your knees to your chest, rest your legs, shake it out. We're gonna go into our shoulder bridges, also known as glute or hip bridges. So this is gonna work on our glutes. So head rested, feet flat on the floor, knees point towards the ceiling. Arms by your sides, palms face down. You're gonna squeeze your glutes to lift your hips towards the ceiling. Shoulders stay on the ground, feet and arms stay on the ground, hips lift up. Then you'll lower them back down to the ground. Squeeze glutes to lift. So the squeeze is coming from the glutes. You should feel this in your glutes and your hamstrings. Now, you can stay here, moving at your own pace, lowering and lifting your hips. If you want more of a hamstring challenge, that's what I'll offer today. So you can flex your feet. So heels on the ground, toes to the ceiling. Lower those hips, lift the hips. So if you're on your heels, it just adds a little bit more fire through the hamstrings. If you wanna increase your range of motion, I guess I'll op add two options today. You'll go on your tippy toes, hips lower, hips lift. That just gives you a wider range of motion. Makes it harder to lift and lower. So you choose your option today. And three, two, one, rest your hips. Nice job. We're gonna sit up for a nice spine twist stretch, focusing on breathing and releasing our spine. So go ahead, sit up nice and tall, legs extended long in front of you, squeeze those legs together, arms in a T shape. We're gonna twist our chest, our torso to the right. Hold for three, three extra seconds or however long feels good to you. Unwind, twist to the left. So as you twist, if you exhale, you're getting more of a stretch releasing through the muscles. As you untwist and you face forward, you can inhale. Moving at your own pace, taking nice deep breaths. Releasing any tension in the core and the spine. 
Again, as one side stretches, the other has to contract because our muscles work in opposition. So still getting work, although we are stretching. Okay, go ahead, shake it out. I don't know if y'all are ready to get into glutes, but I am. Best part, save the best part for last. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go into our side kicks now. Let's start with our right side of the body down. So left side is on the ground, right side is towards the ceiling. You have the option to rest your head on your left arm or have your head rest in your left hand. Or what I like to do is have my left elbow underneath my left shoulder. Totally up to you. Doesn't change the integrity of the exercise either way. I'm gonna lift my legs up and just bring them a little bit more forward than my hips are. So I'm no longer in a straight line. Right hand can go on the ground in front of your chest to push down to increase support through the core or you can, your right hand can go on your hip. My hand is gonna go on the ground. Let's start our kicks. Right or er, right leg lifts up. Did, I think I my left side is on the ground. Did I say right side on the ground? No, no. Yep. Okay, let, my left side is on the ground. <laughs> right side is towards the ceiling. Okay, so I'm gonna lift. Oh, sorry, go ahead. We're kicking forward? Yep. So right leg lifts up to hip height, flex your foot to kick forward, point your toes to kick backward, trying to keep your leg at hip height the entire time and keeping your upper body stable. So left side down, right side up, right leg is kicking forward, kicking back. Flex to kick forward, point to kick back. You're getting your knee, middle glutes, it's called the glute knee. Um, as you're doing this exercise here, front and back. Nice job. Let's switch them out for up and downs. My hips are tight. Wow. Okay. So right leg lifts to the ceiling and lowers back down. I'm going to have my foot flex for this one. This is changing from the glute knee to the outer glutes. So you'll feel a pinch in your hip in those side glutes here choosing your range of motion and your speed. Small movements are highly underrated in exercise, but you feel them. The smaller you go, the more reps you get. So Pilates is all about small movements. Small movements for big difference. All right, let's switch those out for circles. Draw circles with your right leg. If you would like to brush your ankles as they go past, your right ankle goes past your left, that ensures that your circle stays centered over your left leg. You, with this circular motion, you'll feel it. I feel it a lot in my outer glutes. We're engaging more muscles as we go through a rounded motion. Switch directions. Switch directions of your circle. Ooh. Outer glutes on fire. Who mm. missed this? I did. <laughs> All right, go ahead and rest your right leg. Now, let's do one more, let's do donkey kicks to do one more for those um, center glutes here. So tabletop position, hands underneath shoulders, knees underneath hips. Keep the bend in your right leg as you stamp or kick your right heel back. So right heel kicks back behind you, maybe towards the ceiling as far as you can, and then comes back down to the resting position. Here, you wanna keep your belly button pulled into your spine so your back stays flat. So when I do that kicking motion, it's only my right leg that's moving. If you were to remove my right leg from my body, it would look like my entire body still that I am just resting in this position. So. As you kick back, you'll feel the contraction where your thigh meets your glutes and maybe a little bit above that as well. That's what we're working here. My knee stays bent the whole time, right? Yep, you got it. Oh yeah, I'm feeling it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Three, two, one. Oh. We switch sides. 
So now I'm gonna go oh. right side down to the ground, left side to the ceiling. Okay. Right side is down, left side is up. Choose how to best support yourself with your right arm, whether that's a pillow or elbow under shoulder, whatever works for you. Lift your legs and slide them forward so they're just a little bit ahead of your hips. Legs are still straight. Left hand can support in front of your chest on the ground. And let's go ahead and start. Lift that left leg, flex your foot, kick your left heel forward, and point your toe to kick your leg back. Trying to keep your leg at hip height the entire time. Trying to keep your whole body stable. Just like in those donkey kicks here, we wanna keep our entire body as still as possible. And it's just our movement isolated through that left leg, those left glutes. You'll feel this again through the middle of your glutes. I'm gonna need that deep stretch tomorrow. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, yeah. Funny how that works out. <laughs> All right, go ahead and let's do up downs. Keeping my foot flexed, leg goes up, legs go down. Nice job. Leg up and leg down. Side glutes, hips, feeling this in a big way. My left hip is a little bit weaker than my right hip because of previous injuries. So I always feel in a big way a little bit sooner on the left side. So if you feel a difference on either side, totally normal. And let's switch to those circles. You choose the size of your circle. Feel free to brush your ankles as you come through center to keep your circle centered over your bottom leg. Makes you just feel the burn that much more. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> so big circles are bigger range of motion. Smaller circles allow you more reps. <laughs> so I would say, I would argue that smaller circles hurt more, um, but you be the judge of that. Choose what works for you today. Switch direction. Is it supposed Ooh. to kill your, your your hip goes into your leg? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, so that's yeah. the muscle that you're strengthening right there. And those muscles get tired because we sit so yeah. this really wakes them up and activates them so that we're stronger in those areas that are so sedentary all the time. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Oh. Yep, you're doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not trying to kill you, I've been honest. No, I know, I know. I just wanna make sure I'm doing it right. <laughs> all right, go ahead and rest. We'll do those donkey kicks on our left side. So hands on the ground, underneath shoulders, knees underneath, hips, left leg left leg stays bent your heel kicks behind you more towards the ceiling if you can get there back is flat if your back starts to bend just decrease the range of motion make the kick smaller it's the same work just making sure you're isolating that muscle so knee comes down heel kicks back off one getting the middle of those glutes one more time before we stretch out. Yeah, this side I'm shaking. <laughs> yes, well, that's good because that means that your legs are getting fatigued. Um, it means you're isolating well. So the shake is good. We always, in all the classes that I take rather than teach, they're always saying, if you're shaking, you're doing it right. Don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, in three, two, oh. One, rest. Nice job, everybody. I'm gonna do some wrist circles here just because my wrists get tired from being in tabletop position. So that's you too, you're not alone. And we're gonna go into our stretch. We're gonna actually start with a glute stretch today. So um, we're gonna go ahead and sit on our bottoms. Feet flat on the floor, knees point towards the ceiling. I'm gonna put my hands underneath my shoulders, fingertips point forward to help support me in this. This is a really intense stretch. So if this is too much, feel free to um, just do a variation of it, which I can walk through also. But we're gonna do our four stretch or our seated pigeon. So 
my right ankle is going to rest. The outside of my right ankle is going to come rest on my left thigh. So this forces my right knee to point outwards and forces my hip to open. If this is a lot, you can extend your left leg longer so that that stretch is a little decreased and it forces your hip open a little bit less. Breathe through it. Now to personally intensify this, the more you point your right knee out and away from you, the more it's gonna open your hip. You also have the option to lie on your back in this position and hug your left leg in closer to your chest to force your right ankle towards you. If that's a little bit more in too intense, but you still wanna increase it, uh, extend your chest closer to your, um, while you're sitting, extend your chest closer to your ankle uh, and that will increase the stretch as well. And let's go ahead and switch. Plant your right foot down. The outside of your left ankle rests on your right thigh. And take your options here. So you can extend your right leg a little bit longer, bringing your right foot a little bit further away from you. You can bring it closer. You can hug your left thigh into your chest, rolling on your back, really opening the hip here. And then after this stretch, we'll go into our um, our cat cow, our normal stretch routine. Okay, go ahead and release. Let's go into our cat cow, tabletop position. Knees underneath hips, hands underneath shoulders. I reversed the direction so my brain didn't know what to do. <laughs> um, dip your belly low, point your nose forward for cow. Feeling a deep stretch through your entire abdominal wall, surface abs, deep abs. And then when you're ready, you can arch your back to the sky, push through the palms of your hands, chin to your chest for cat. Go through these at your own pace. These are opposing stretches. So when you do cat, you're stretching the abdominal wall. As you do cow, you're stretching your spinal column. So just work through those oppositions here and when you're ready finish it out roll onto your back let's do some stretching of those legs those glutes so on my back laying on my back hug your right knee into your chest left leg can either go long or you can plant your left foot on the ground flat on the ground um that just like releases the tension in your lower back if you're feeling any so Take whatever option feels best for you. As your right knee is hugged into your chest, feel free to do some ankle circles, draw some circles with your right toes in both directions to loosen up those ankles if you are feeling that during any of our standing balance or ankles. Now, my favorite stretch of all time. Left hand goes to the outside of your right leg, outside your right knee. Right arm goes into a T on the ground. Use your left hand to guide your right knee over to the left. Point your nose right. So your right hip will come off the ground as far as you let it. If your right knee touches the ground on the left side of your body, great. That's not true for me. So if it's not true for you, that's okay. You're getting a nice shoulder opener stretch. You're getting a glute stretch. You're getting a spine twist. And if you want an increased glute stretch, if you have a lot more flexibility in your hips than I do. Uh, the closer you pull your right knee towards your left shoulder, the more of a glute stretch you'll feel. So lots of ways to play with stretches. So kind of play around with it, move your body to find what feels good. And when you're ready, unwind, let's switch sides. So hug your left knee to your chest. Again, right leg can go long or plant it on the ground. And option to do those ankle circles, loosen up that ankle joint, those ligaments um, supporting our ankles. And my favorite stretch, left hand or left hand goes into a T, right hand reaches to the outside of the right or outside of the left knee. Use your hand to guide your left knee over to the right side of your body, nose points left. Play around with what feels good if it feels good, there's not a wrong way to do this stretch. 
So play with it. Bring your knee forward, maybe release it a little bit. Let your hip come off the ground. Find what works for you today. It always changes. Your body changes each day. So what feels good today could feel different tomorrow. Always exploring new possibilities. Okay, go ahead and unwind. I'm gonna hug both my knees to my chest and I'll just rock back and forth, feeling a little spine massage. And I'm gonna go ahead and sit up. Seated forward fold, legs long in front of me. Reach for your toes. Maybe you fall among your knees, your shins, your ankles, whatever works best for you. Stretching out the backs of your legs, but also your spine. If you'd like to get deeper into this and you can't quite touch your toes yet, what you can do is start with a slight bend in your knees until you can reach your toes. And then you push your heels away from you just a bit. Nice job. With every exhale, releasing a little bit more. And go ahead, sit up nice and tall. We go to butterfly next. Feet together, knees apart. Bottoms of your feet touch. Sending your knees out to each side. Play with this as well. The further your knees point out to each side, the further stretch you're gonna get. If you do this, please be careful, listen to your body, but you can use your arms to push your knees down further to feel that stretch deeper through the inner thighs. But again, not overdoing it, not straining just to feel enough to feel good. You can also hinge forward at the waist, bring your feet closer in towards you, finding what feels best. And for our final stretch, we'll extend our legs into a V-shape, V-shape wide straddle stretch. Reach your hands out into the space in front of you. Feel a stretch through the inner thighs, through your spine. I'm going to go ahead and release. I will stop our recording here.